Hello, I'm George Cairns and in this video lesson I'm going to show you how to turn your friends and family into gruesome blood-sucking zombies like this chap here. There's the before and there's the after and what we're going to do is use a lot of different techniques for compositing elements like these cracks. They're actually cracks from a old peeling wall with paint hanging off it and that is turned into peeling skin with a little bit of layer blending help. We're also going to add a plastic skull to create these protruding teeth and bones. I'm going to show you how to composite that and change the colour and use masks to help blend it in nice and effectively with this cracked texture effect. We're also going to use the cracked texture to create these gruesome bloodshot zombie eyes as well. And there's a great filter technique to create this dripping blood on the wall behind him, which is a very quick and easy way to produce this kind of illustration. So there's lots of different tips, tricks and techniques to pick up. If I drag the layers palette on, you can see that there's a lot going on in here and there's a lot to get through. So let's kick off by opening our start image, which is called zombiebefore.jpg. Now our subject is looking too healthy, so let's emaciate him with help from the Liquify filter. If you go up to Filter and go to Liquify, this window will pop up and you'll be able to use this tool here, which is the Forward Warp tool, to put him on a bit of a digital diet. So once it's drawn up the image, like so, set the brush size to 400, brush density to 50, and the pressure to 100. You can then Control Plus to zoom in, and then just gently click and pull the pixels in a little bit around about here, just to create a thinner looking jawline and you can always use the left square bracket to scale down the brush tip uh, a little bit here just to then just pull it in a tad as well. You might need to adjust the ear as well because that will look a little bit too stretched and flat and that puts him on a bit of a diet. Click OK to apply the change and that gives you a more skull like shape already once it's applied the liquify result. I've just popped up here to change the panel options to get larger thumbnails so you can see things more clearly and we're going to add an adjustment layer now to turn the face a ghoulish green. So click here and scroll down to Hue Saturation and up pops the adjustment layer window which we can dock to the bottom of the layers palette for the moment. Now what we're going to do is target the skin tones, the reds for starters, and we're going to change the hue of those skin tones to make him look a little bit more jaundiced. Around about plus 30 will give us a yellower looking uh, face and then we can create another adjustment layer. Now we've got that lovely yellow, go to hue saturation again. And this time we can target the yellows and we can change the hue as well to make it a more gangrenous green. So if we take that up to about plus 20, then he's certainly looking more like a traditional um, Romero 1970s era zombie with a bit of a green hue to his face. But there's also a hint of the other skin tone showing through, so that's quite cool. We can take the saturation down a wee bit for a more subtle effect, so about minus 10, to make him look more pale. And we can reduce the opacity of that layer as well to around about 75% to make it less dramatic. So that's the cool thing about working with layers and adjustment layers. You can fine tune the effect very specifically. And the other cool thing about adjustment layers is you can go back and change things with ease. So if we go back to the previous one, go back to the reds channel. I'm just going to take the red saturation down a wee bit to around about minus 16 or so, just to make him look more ill and paler. That gives us a very sickly looking chap indeed. I can get rid of the adjustments layer palette now by dragging it and closing it for the moment. But I can bring it back at any time by double clicking on one of these. So he's looking a bit more emaciated, he's looking a little bit green around the gills. We're now going to emphasise some of his bone structure by dodging and burning. So click here to create a new layer, drag it to the top of the layer stack and go to edit and fill that new layer with 50% grey which you'll get from the contents drop down menu here. Click OK and there's the grey. Now if we set the blending mode to overlay then the 50% grey will disappear, it doesn't make any difference at all. But if we lighten or darken this layer we can lighten or darken the tone. So we're going to be dodging and burning on a separate layer which means that it's a non-destructive edit. We can change it at any time and it won't affect the actual pixels of the original photograph. Now what we're going to do is grab the burn tool and burn in some of the shadows to create more of this bone structure. If we set the range to mid-tones, set the exposure to around about uh, maybe 14% or so, and if we choose a nice soft edge brush, around about 200 should do the trick. Then what we can do is click on layer 1, and because we're going to burn some of these darker tones, you just click and spray like this, and you can see the dark tones appearing on the layer, and it's also darkening some of these shadows on the guy's face. Under the eyes is a good place to darken it helps them make a sunken eye effect and if we just click and continue going around here we can kind of make it look like the bone is pushing out a little bit more under his emaciated skin. We can darken down here as well and we can always come back and fine tune this later but you can see the technique we're using is working really well. If I turn this layer off there's the before 
and already a little bit of dodging. It's like applying makeup to our subject. It's already creating a more skeletal looking face. I've just jumped forward to burn in a little bit of detail here to darken the mouth and make it look more sinister. I'm now going to go to the dodge tool to lighten certain parts. If we click here and set the range to highlights, exposure to about 5%, we can take the brush size down to something a little smaller, like around about maybe 300 or so pixels. And then if you click and spray on the layer now, you'll see that we're lightening the highlights in the hair just to reveal some of the textures. And you can see some light bits appearing on our gray layer. It's also worth clicking and spraying just to lighten the whites of the eyes and you get a more ghoulish staring zombie face. So there's the before, there's the after and it's shaping up quite nicely. You'll find when you burn in detail into the mouth you make the lips look a little bit too red. So what we can do is choose this tool here which shares the same compartment. It's the sponge tool. Set it to desaturate and a flow of about 14 to do the trick and then click on the background layer and just click and spray to take away some of the colour and create a slightly paler and a less saturated area on the lips. Now in theory you could apply makeup in the real world to get an effect like this but we're going to go one step further now and add some jutting cheekbones from this skull. It's not very realistic but it's going to be much more effective once we've done some layer blending but first of all we need to make a selection of the darker tones in the skull to apply to the guy's cheekbones. To do that we need to go to window and pop down to the channels palette and if you control click on the RGB channel thumbnail it will select the brightest pixels in the shot. You can then pop up to select and choose inverse and it's now selecting the opposite of that, the darker pixels including these lovely cheekbones and shadows underneath here and that's the bits we're interested in. So we can then go to edit and choose copy and then pop to our other file if you control tab you can cycle through and what we'll do is we'll click in the layers palette and then edit paste or control V to paste in the selected skull like so. We don't need the channels palette anymore, so click here to close that. Press Z for the zoom tool, right click and choose fit on screen. And then if we set the skull layers blending mode to multiply, it should blend more effectively with the background. You can then grab the move tool, click and drag and position it like so. And now we need to transform it and rotate and scale it so it fits our fellow more effectively. And to do so, we can press Ctrl and T to open the free transform window. You can then click outside that and rotate the skull so that the teeth line up. You can then click and hold shift key to constrain it and drag it down to make it a little bit smaller. So try and get the teeth to line up in the same angle and position as the rest of the shot. You might need to scale things individually. You can click and squeeze it in a little bit to try and fit perfectly. We're after the cheekbones particularly, so they're going to overlap the right place. That looks quite good actually. Um, so if I'm happy, I can hit return to apply the change. I can then press V for the move tool and then use the up and down and left arrow keys just to fine tune the position of the skull like so. I'm going to control plus to zoom in for a closer look and what we need to do now is to tidy up the edge of this layer to mask it in more effectively with the cheekbones of the background image. So what we're going to do now is create a layer mask. If you're using an older version of Photoshop Elements, you won't be able to add a mask very easily, but I'll show you how to create one from scratch now, and then we'll come back to CS and I'll show you how to do it using CS. It's not much of a detour. If you just click here to create an adjustment layer in the old versions of Elements, you can create a Levels Adjustment Layer, drag it below the layer you want to add the mask to, and then move between the two holding the Alt key. You get this little icon, click, and you now have this mask attached to the layer. I'm going to just undo that now and go back through the timeline and in Photoshop CS5 and in Elements 9 and Elements 10 all you need to do is click here to create a mask and you can see that it's attached to the layer. So both techniques will give you a white mask which you can paint on to hide parts of the layer and to do that we need the brush tool. So click here to select that and then pop up to here to choose a nice soft round brush and we can make that a little bit larger, something like uh, 400 should do the trick for the moment. Um, then click on the mask to select it, make sure you've got a black foreground colour, click here if it's not black, and then when you're on the mask you can click and spray and make sure that the opacity is 100% so that you're spraying pure black onto the mask and then click and spray first of all to remove the edge of this particular skull layer. We're only interested in the cheekbones so let's get rid of the hand and the top section, these clamps around the edge there and also the skull itself at the bottom with the teeth. We're only after the cheekbones for the moment. When you get to around about here, let's control plus just to zoom in and use a smaller brush tip by using the left square bracket and just click and spray gently to try and blend in this cheekbone like so. So you just see a hint of cheekbone and again here as well, just a hint of cheekbone poking out. If you go too far over the cheekbone, 
press X to swap the foreground color to white and then you can then restore by spraying white on the mask to bring back some of that particular cheekbone. X again gives you black and that lets you hide things and that way you can see all between the two colors and then just blend things more effectively. I've jumped forward in time just to spray over the rest of the shot to hide the holes in the eyes and the nose for example. So there is our cheekbone layer, we can turn that on and off and you can see it makes quite a difference to our zombie. Let me just tidy this bit up as well. There we go. Now for the fun part, the peeling skin. What we're going to do is go to the zombie texture and grab this tool here, the lasso tool, and then just click and draw around this section here to grab a nice jagged bit of peeling plaster and paint. Then edit and copy. Control and tab will go back to the main layer. Control V to paste it in or edit paste. And then what we can do is Control T for the free transform tool and then just drag this round until it's rotated at around about this angle here. I'm just trying to get it into this kind of position here with this crack going up his nose because this is the uh, particular peeling paint effect that I want. I'm just going to scale it down a wee bit as well just to narrow it in. And when you finish fine tuning the position, size and scale and rotation of this area here then hit return to apply the transformation. Now to turn this peeling paint into flaky skin we need to change the blending mode of the layer to multiply and it takes on the colour at the lighter parts here of the flesh below. Then we can add a layer mask Grab the brush tool again by pressing B or clicking here. Make sure we've got a nice large brush and it's got to be black. Click on the mask and let's control plus to zoom in. Hold the space bar to get the uh, hand tool and then we can use the left square bracket just to scale things down and start to take off the edge of this layer here just to start blending this uh, transplanted cracking skin with the rest of the shot. So we're going to keep this layer here. The cool thing about masks is they're non-destructive so there's no danger of destroying any of this layer that we've added. We can just fine tune things to our heart's content. So we're using a nice soft edge brush to start with but we're going to then move in and use a hard edge brush to help blend more effectively. And the cool thing is we can press X to swap foreground colour to white and then start to bring back some of the crap texture that we've initially hidden just to create a nice chapped look to the lips there. X again just to hide that join and that's a cool way of getting a balance between what we can see and what is mixed in from the layer below. Pop back to the zombie skull image and make a rough and ready lasso selection of the jaw and the teeth like so and then copy and paste them into the main document and use the free transform tool to align them with the mouth like so. You can see the original teeth and the new teeth lining up quite nicely. Hit return to apply the change on that particular layer and then what we're going to do is add a mask to it and then click on the mask and press Control and I to invert the mask and hide the teeth temporarily. You can now click on the mask, grab the brush tool, use a white brush and click and spray to start bringing back these details here to the image. Don't worry if they're overlapping the skin at the moment, we're going to fine tune things in just a tick. Let's just click and spray roughly to begin to reveal the teeth. And what we can do here is go and create a hard edge brush by dragging the slider to the right. And then if you just click and spray, you can see it's a bit harder now. If we control plus to zoom in a bit more and then change this to black to hide things, left square bracket gives us a smaller tip. You can then start to spray around the edge of the skin to create a sharper distinction between the skin and the teeth, just to stop the teeth from actually overlapping the skin because the skin should be on the top and then the teeth are underneath. If we set the brush to black and reduce the opacity to 23 it actually sprays grey and that helps us just gently blend the teeth a little bit more effectively with the background by creating a semi transparent blend. I pop down to this layer mask here and I've used a black brush just to hide some more of this texture to reveal some of the skin below to help it grow up over the jaw. Now our teeth are too plasticky and white because they're made of white plastic so what we're going to do is target the tooth layer and go to image adjustments go down to hue saturation and up pops this dialog box and we're going to click colorize and we're going to tint the tooth by dragging hue to the right here so we set it to around about 59 you can type the value in here if you want to do it quickly that gives you a yellow tint to the hue and you can then boost the saturation a wee bit as well by dragging this to 30 click ok to apply the change to give the teeth more impact we'll click on the layer here and then grab the burn tool set the range to shadows set the uh, exposure to about 14 percent that should be fine and just click and spray just to darken those teeth and give them a little bit more impact a bit more gruesome looking detail there 
Then let's tweak the levels to help them match the levels in the rest of the shop. Again, to image, adjustments, levels, up pops the levels command. What we can do now is tweak the midtones. If you can drag them to the left, you lighten them. Or if you drag them to the right, you darken them. So a value of around about 0.74 should give us a darker looking midtones. You can type the value in like so. And then we're going to just make the whites less white by dragging this output level slider to the left. And that just darkens them a wee bit more. So around about 228 should be enough to fine tune things. Click OK. And that's just tweaking the levels to darken them a little bit and make them match the rest of the shot. Now no zombie would be seen dead or undead without bloodshot eyes. So grab the lasso tool, make a selection on a bit of the texture here, Control C to copy it, and then pop back here, Control V to paste it onto a new layer and place it above one of the eyeballs like so. And then change the blending mode to multiply, add a layer mask, grab the brush tool, and then click on the mask and spray around the edge of the eyeball here just to restrict these veins to the ball itself, but not to the skin surrounding the eye. Then when you've finished editing the mask, click on the attached layer and go to image adjustments, back to hue saturation again, click colorize and drag the hue slider all the way up to 360 to get a nice bloodshot red effect. And you can also drag lightness up a wee bit as well, just to help brighten up that um, bloodshot look. Around about 25 should do the trick. Click OK and there you have your bloodshot eyeball. Then repeat the technique to add a bloodshot eyeball to the other eye. The next thing to do is to select other parts of the zombie texture layer and then add those to the image in different parts like this and then use a layer mask to just blend them in and use layer blends as well so it's a multiply to take on the colour of the skin on the layer below. You can also add some blotches to the skin by clicking here to create a new layer and pop that at the top, then grab the brush tool, go to the brush preset picker and scroll down to get a nice spatter effect click here and choose a nice reddish color as well. Let's go for something fairly dark and rich and make sure on the top layer and then use a right square bracket to create a larger brush tip and just click and spray just to add the spatter effect. I'm going to use a larger one at the top here and a couple of smaller bits here and some on the fingers as well. Now that's a little bit too strong so what we can do is change the blending mode to darken and then reduce the opacity to a much more subtle effect. So you just get a hint of blobs. Any that don't work, like the bit on the finger here, you can grab the eraser and spray to remove them. And then go back to the brush tip and use a smaller section here just to add a hint of blood to the fingers like so. Okay, so there's a little bit of mottling effect to the skin. It looks like a nasty rash that's caused this particular zombie outbreak. I'm going to take the opacity down even more because less is always more in Photoshop. Keep it more subtle and it'll be more convincing. To create a nice blood red pattern dripping down the wall behind him, create a new layer, pop it at the top of the layer stack, go to edit, fill and choose white from the contents, click OK and then choose a blood red colour from the tool picker here and then choose a nice red colour from the colour picker here, click OK and go to filter, go down to render and choose fibres and that pops this window here. Now if we set strength to around about 40 and variance to around about 4, we should get a dripping pattern. If you click randomize, then you might get a better effect with the blood dripping from the top of the screen. And when you found an effect that you like, click OK to apply it to this top layer and then change the blending mode to color burn to mix the blood with the rest of the shot like so. You can then pop down to the background layer where we've got a nice gray background, grab this selection tool here, like the quick selection, or in fact the magic wand will do, and then just click to select some of that gray background, shift click again, like so, and then you can add these little bits as well to the selection just to then mask out the guy so he's protected from the blood. So let's pop up to this top layer again, click here, and that will apply a layer mask using the selection to protect the guy. If there's any bits that need to be tweaked, you can always control plus to zoom in and then click on the mask, grab the brush tool, and then if you apply a small white brush, you can then spray to bring back the blood where it's needed, just like in here as well. And as a finishing touch, click at the top here and press Shift, Control, Alt and E to create a flattened version of all of the layers below. And what we can do is take that into Liquify and make his eyes bulge a little bit. So let's go to Filter, go down to Liquify, up pops the Liquify window, which should appear like so. And then this time we're going to grab the Bloat tool to make the eyes swell outwards as if bloated. And if I just click a couple of times on each eye, it should just help them swell up a little bit in a subtle 
but effective way. Don't go over the top, click OK to apply the change and we should be able to turn that on and off to show you the before and after on the bloated eyes. Let me just have a quick look. Here we go. So there's the before, there's the after and that just creates a slightly more surreal and scary looking zombie beast. And let's add a quick adjustment there just to tweak the final tones. Go down to levels and that pops the levels adjustments window. And let's just crush those blacks a little bit more for a more dramatic look. Round about 11 should do the trick. And let's blow out those highlights a wee bit more as well by dragging the slider to the left at 230. And that just helps darken some of the blacks to create a more sinister looking zombie with nice dark shadows around the cheekbones.